Welcome to Finite Element Methods. Now we'll be talking about fraction mechanics and this will be our final special topic, the final lecture for this course. And I hope you enjoyed it so far, but we cannot go without covering fraction mechanics, which is quite important because a flaw that could occur from manufacturing or any other way could propagate in the structure and lead the failure of the structure during the service life. And that could be quite problematic. So we need to find ways to analyze for these kinds of behaviors, this kind of failure mode, which can be quite important. And that's where the idea of non-destructive evaluation, fractional mechanics, mechanics analyses come together to then be used to ensure that the structure is damage tolerant and robust to flaws that could, that could occur during manufacturing. So let's hit that topic now. Uh, the, I don't have to even explain why we need to look at fraction mechanics. If you have a flaw and you apply loads and the flaw is large enough, trust me, I think I have about 10 examples here and there's, that's not even complete. If you have a flaw and it's large enough and you apply loads, there's a flaw at which that crack will propagate and will result in failure. So it's important for us to also pay attention to that. Um, so fraction is a fracture is basically a creation of new surfaces uh, within a body uh, and so usually the fracture process starts with nucleation of the crack so it nucleates and then it coalesces into into a larger crack and it can propagate from there okay and in the flaw if the flaw uh, or the defect is large enough then under the loading conditions it will propagate the failure Fracture can be either ductile or brittle. Uh, today we're going to be discussing fracture propagation where the crack tip does not experience, it has a, a small plastic zone, but it's not significant compared to the far field, which is mostly linear in nature. Okay, so we're not going to cover elastic plastic fracture mechanics here. I don't think we can do that in less than 16 minutes. Okay, so we're not doing that. But this should be sufficient for a lot of your problems that you'll encounter in real life. Um, there are three types of mode of fractures, mode one, two, and three. Uh, we'll be focusing on mode one. Uh, in a lot of cases in real life, you can actually turn a lot of your problems into mode one analysis. And so that's why I'll focus on mode one. So there's ways uh, to, to formulate your problem in a way that is a mode one problem. So, for example, if I have a crack tip that's slanted, what I could do is maybe look at the max principal stress or the stress that will open that crack uh, and perhaps follow that instead. Uh, but, but that is a much complex subject. So for now, we're going to focus on mode one of crack propagation, okay, for the, for the time being. Okay, so uh, this is not actually a very difficult idea you know so what we're talking about here do you agree that when you propagate a crack new surfaces will form yeah you agree that if i apply a load to this pen and i put a crack in there you agree that the stiffness will lower does that make sense to you if, if i put a crack there so there's no crack i load it up it's fairly stiff if I put a crack right through the center, it should be less stiff, right? So did I have did I have loss of strain energy because of this? So when you form a crack, when there's a, a crack that forms in the structure, this creation of new surfaces. And this creation of new surfaces causes an, a loss in energy, strain energy. Okay? And that loss in strain energy is called the energy, energy release rate, okay? So the energy release rate is a change in strain energy due to increased area of crop propagation, okay? If this G, if this value of G is greater than the critical value, which is a material param parameter that can be measured in a test, then the crop will propagate. But if G is the energy release rate is less then the critical energy release rate, then the crack will be stable. It will not propagate. 
Um, another measure of crop propagation is stress intensity factor. And so a stress intensity factor uh, is in essence, if you have, if you have, uh, if there's a crack in the structure, the stress at the crack tip will be infinite. Stress intensity factor provides you a mean of measuring that stress intensity, um, basically looking at the field surrounding that crack tip. And so K <clears throat> usually takes this form. K is equal to F times sigma squared of pi times A. Sig F is a material geometry typically, Geomet geometry and loading dependent. Stress is a, usually the far field stress. Pi, you guys know what pi is, hopefully. 3.14159? I will not continue from there. And then A is a crack length, okay? Uh, it has uh, units of uh, MPA square root of M. So pressure, units of stress, square root of length. The fracture toughness of the material can be measured. This fracture toughness is measured using the ASTM standard E3999. So it's, it's a material property that can be measured for steel, aluminum, whatever you're working on. You can measure this property. Okay, and now what you can do is convert this KC, this fracture toughness, you can convert it to G to get the critical energy release rate. So if I know K, I can take the square root of that, divide it by the modulus, and that will give me G, the critical energy release rate. So step one, do the test. ASTM standard, E3999. E399, and that will give you the fracture toughness of the material. Then take the fracture toughness, square it, divide it by the modulus, and the modulus will depend if it's plain stress or plain strain, you'll have to adjust it accordingly. And that will give you the critical energy release rate. And so once you have the critical energy release rate, you can now compare it, compare this to G. Now, how we calculate G? You can calculate G using abacus, and you can calculate G using three different ways. There's actually five different ways, but I will show you two different ways here, and hopefully we can make uh, the the other way work. Okay, uh, the process is fairly simple. Uh, the strain energy on the applied loads, we've already covered this. The strain energy is basically the displacements of the whole system transpose times the whole stiffness matrix of your fine element times Q minus Q transpose F. Now, Abacus actually gives you this value for the whole model. It can plot that for you. In fact, for your Buckley model, I encourage you to plot the strain energy. You can actually plot that. And when a strain energy becomes not quadratic, so it's supposed to be quadratic. Does, doesn't this look quadratic to you in nature? So it should look quadratic, and then when it's not quadratic anymore, that's when buckling is starting to occur. So you can actually use that as a measure as well. Not just the other, I showed you some other ways in the previous lecture, but you can also use strain energy. So strain energy can also be calculated in, a, in, a, in the problems that you actually solved in class. Uh, once you have the deflection, you know the stiffness matrix of the whole system, this is fairly easy to calculate. So if I know you, then I can calculate the derivative of u respect to the crack length. And so uh, when, I, when I take that derivative, which is fairly long here, uh, you will see that if for the same force, if for the same force the crack grows, then the force did not change, you agree? So the derivative of f respect to crack length growth is zero, so the, this rate is zero. That's this derivative, that goes away. When you take some of these derivatives, you'll find that you get a kq minus f. This is zero by equilibrium conditions, okay? So you can calculate g just by simply calculating this right here, minus one half q transpose, change in stiffness divided by change in crack length or crack area times q. And if you calculate this, you get g. That's one method. Another method is actually even simpler. You run abacus, <laughs> get the total energy for one the crack length you put in there. Then run abacus again, but now increase the crack length just a little bit. And let abacus give you the total energy. So you have now the strain energy with the original crack length you had in there. 
You get the strain energy with a little bit longer crack length. It will give it to you. Advocates will give it to you. Calculate the difference between the two models. Do, do you know how much you extended the crack in the model? Bam, you get G. And these two methods will match each other. The third method is a counter integral that Abacus has. Abacus has a way of calculating this using a counter integral. I won't have time to discuss the theory here, but if you look it up online, I think you will learn or get a book on fracture mechanics. You will learn how to calculate the counter integral approach. Um, but I showed you two methods. They usually match really well. Once I calculate G for my problem, okay, I, may, I compare that with GC. And if G is greater than GC, the crack will grow unstably. If G is less than GC, the crack will not grow. Now, that's true for a single static loading condition. But if you have fatigue loading, you will use this G uh, in the loading spectrum to determine whether the crack will propagate uh, due to fatigue conditions. And then you will have to use Paris law. And so that will be out of scope for this class. But if you want to learn some more, uh, I can send you some good books to, to look into so you can purchase, okay? This demonstrates the importance of fracture mechanics and how to go about it. You can do hand calculations, you can use finite element analysis, you can do testing. And all those three methods can be very, very effective at being able to capture the behavior of fracture uh, in a material. But that's a very important failure mode that needs to be considered fracture has mechanics has been used extensively to make to ensure the robustness of a structure when subjected to very complicated loading conditions within the presence of a flaw within the structure with this we concluded the finite element method course and i hope you enjoyed the whole series it was exciting it was a great time to keep learning about various topics in structural mechanics. Have a good day.